front hall. So let's go to the DU. The wandering DU and the elastic genome B, I didn't quite know how to call it. I'm looking for a term if anyone's got something interesting. The DU could be anywhere. Right? It could be at the base of a tower in the DRAN model. It can be between the PRTC and the RU, more or less anywhere. It can be in a DU pool, an aggregation point upstream from the RU. It can be virtualized. And the DU could be a sync master for other virtualized DU in the pool. And does it matter? Well, it only matters for the DU to RU relative time error calculations. Otherwise, the DU, it doesn't matter where it is. What matters is how you sync the RU, right? This is it here. So the relative time error is between the RU attached to the same DU. In a DU pool, one RU can be the sync master, as I've said, for the other RU. In this case, all the RU have the same sync master. So in the case, for example, in Rakuten in Japan, they have a virtualized DU pool with a DU sync master and 600 cells talking to that DU pool, up to 600 small cells, and all RUs being uh, you know, attached across the, the front hall network. The virtualized DU with a sync master platform then can be at uh, attached to subtended DU in the same C plane, right, for the sync purposes. Okay, so thousands of D AUs uh, 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 RUs, sorry, uh, 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 talking to a DU pool. So, what is the genome B? Well, the genome B can be the DRAN, the classic thing that you see here around the world, with the, uh, you know, the, the next generation core with a PRTC, the virtual CU sitting in the cloud, DRAN backhaul, timing from the PRTC to the RU, remember, up the tower. Simple. Or it can be a building. So now we have the PRTC, the backhaul network, which is engineered either using 8275.1 or 8275.2, usually 75.1 these days, with EEC. The DU sitting at the base of the building, time boundary clocks on the switches, spread through the building. It can be a high-rise building with RUs on every floor. You're populating the floors with your, uh, your RUs. Now, is this, what is this then? Is, this looks like a Geno B, right? Because you have a DU and RUs. So suddenly the building is the genome B, right? Just as it was, or is it a, or is it a CRAN? I don't really know, because CRAN tends to be CIPRI. Okay, so what about in this environment? Let's have a PRTC in the core and the back hall using 8275.1 to a DU pool, and now we have, well, this could be Heathrow, Terminal 4, with RUs right around Heathrow sitting on an optical layer. So this is a Geno B, right? So now Terminal 4 is a Geno B. So we have a DRAN that's a Geno B, or a building that's a Geno B. Now we have a whole terminal that's a Geno B. Or could it be the whole of Isle of Dogs, for example, which is a Geno B? Why not? Because the DU can go anywhere, right? Is this back hall now, or is this front hall? I think it's front hall. And now all you have to do to do this is you've got to meet these time requirements. If your network has fast boundary clocks, you're coming in at relative 130 or 260 nanoseconds to these RUs, there's your genome B. It can be a very large area, right? So it requires careful engineering of the time error. But as long as you can meet that time error, where you put the DU pool doesn't really matter. It's about careful engineering now. It's not about you have to deploy it next to the RU. This means that it's incredibly flexible and elastic as you go forward. You're talking about fragmentation. I think I'm trying to address some of that here. It's not just fragmentation on the, on the, uh, uh, the, the CIPRI layer, right, the CIPRI, the CIPRI statement. It's fragmentation. It's in, in terms of elasticity as well. What, is it, what does a genome B look like? 